That's what I need right now. Mm. Okay, so I have an obsession with spicy noodles, but these kimchi spiked ramen noodles, holy smokes, this one has everything a girl could wish for. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn a store-bought stock into something super magical. A little bit of oil and some onion. And we're basically building up a whole bunch of spicy, yummy, umami flavor. And I just want these onions to really soften up. You must always be patient when you're sizzling onions. We really want that soft, sweet, savory flavor, not raw onion flavor. So my onions have turned translucent. Time to add my garlic. And then I've got some slices of ginger here. I've sliced them really large because I want to fish them out at the end. And they're just going to infuse their lovely gingeriness into our broth. And now for some kimchi. So you can find kimchi in most supermarkets these days. Look for it in the fridge section. And I've got here the kimchi cabbage itself. And then my little tip for you always is to just steal a little bit of the kimchi juice out of the packet as well and put a little bit of that in whatever dish that you're cooking, a stir fry or anything like that because it's got loads of flavor. So I'll pour that in there. Okay, now the chicken. And I think for this dish, really, you want the dark meat because we want everything to break down, get all gelatinous and soft. And we want that really intense flavor as well. And this is gonna simmer for a while, so breasts will dry out a little bit. And I've also kept these pieces on the bone because I think that the bone just tends to add a little bit more of that gelatinous texture to the soup. And we want that chicken to get all mixed up in there with everything else. And then we want some soy sauce. Okay, now time for the stock. So if you've got a beautiful homemade stock at home, please go ahead and use it. I'm happy to doctor up a store-bought stock always if it's gonna save me a little bit of time. If I'm having a weeknight dinner, and to be honest, you're adding so much flavor with this kimchi that you won't even notice. And one other little secret ingredient that I have up my sleeve is Korean gochujang, and that's a fermented chili paste. It is savory, full of umami, and it's not super spicy, um, which is why I like to use a whole heap of it, because it adds so much extra flavor and such a lovely color too. So the easiest way to do this is to just pop a ladle into your soup, and I'm gonna just dissolve that paste, because it's quite thick in that ladle, rather than just sort of having it float around in there. Mix that through. Now just bring that up to a gentle simmer and then put the lid on and I want that to keep going and simmering away for about an hour until that chicken is full tender. So let's have a look and see what's been happening in our pot. Ah, and that is seriously magical. That fragrance is amazing. So I know a classic ramen broth would take eight hours, nine hours, but we're doing a shortcut version today. So this is still gonna have a huge amount of flavor. And just because, you know, I like to do things a little bit extra, we're gonna get it roasty and toasty and really lovely and golden in the oven. So I'm gonna pull out my chicken pieces. Okay, and we're gonna add even more flavor by just basting these guys with a little bit of sesame oil and then just a little sprinkling of salt. Now pop these under a really hot oven grill for about 10 minutes or until they're beautifully golden. Okay, now remember those ginger pieces that we put in at the beginning. I'm just gonna take those out. And as always, I'm gonna check my broth for seasoning. That flavor, the kimchi, the spicy gochujang, ah, oh, incredible. Okay, so that chicken has undergone a magical transformation. It is beautiful and golden. Now, I'm gonna get it onto my chopping board. Okay, now this is the part you don't wanna miss, guys. This chicken is literally just falling away from the bone. I'm not even touching it with that knife, almost. It's just coming straight off. Ridiculous, joyful, all of those things. Okay, these noodles are looking good. And of course, because it's ramen, I have giant bowls. Small bowl just wouldn't do. Now back to this amazing broth and I just wanna scoop out some little chunks of kimchi for each bowl. Make sure everyone gets a little portion. And now that glorious soup. Now of course I want some of these chicken pieces and then the final touches. Egg and some spring onion. Ugh. Now. I am ready for the couch. This fried rice has all the good things, spicy ruby red Korean style sauce, beefy beef, egg, vegetables, it's got it all my friends. This is my Korean style beef fried rice. 
Growing up with a Thai mom pretty much means that fried rice is like literally in my blood. I mean, I've been eating it every week for like as long as I can remember. <laughs> but I'm always looking for new ways with fried rice and this one is my Korean style spicy beef version, which I just love because it's got loads of veggies so it makes for a really good weeknight dinner as well. So let's get started on the sauce first of all and I'm gonna use this as a marinade and as our stir fry sauce. Two things, one, wait, how's it go? Two birds, one stone. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna start with some Korean gochujang chili paste first of all. And I literally go through tubs of this stuff at home. It adds such a beautiful, almost like a smoky chili flavor, some umami and savoriness. Just add some good stuff. And some soy sauce as well, some sesame oil, good couple of pinches of sesame seeds and then just give that a mix. Now I've got some beef mince here and I love using mince during the week because it means that I'm not slicing up meat which means everything happens a lot quicker. So I am going to take the time to give this a bit of a marinade though. So that goes in and a few good spoonfuls of that nice spicy red sauce and then just give that a mix. And this just makes sure you know that we're really getting a lot of flavour into our beef. Um, even though we're doing things quickly during the week doesn't mean we can't do them nice. Make it nice everyone. And I'm going to make an omelette for our fried rice as well. So I just want some eggs. And I just need some oil in my wok here. I really want to spread that oil out, make sure we've got a good base before we get our egg in there. And now I like to just kind of swirl the wok around, try and get a nice even thickness for my omelette. Now just flip that over. Love that sunshine yellow egg color. Always makes me happy. All right, now I just want like a rough chop on this egg. When I was little and my mom would make the egg for our Thai fried rice, I would always come and steal the egg omelette part. It's my favorite bit. So good. And now we're ready for the main event, our fried rice. Just want a little bit of oil in here. Same wok that I've done the omelette in. And some garlic, some onion. And now, as usual, when I'm adding in my protein, I just like to push everything aside and then get that beef into the middle there. You're always aiming to get your meat in contact with the hot pan as quickly as possible in the wok because you really want things to sear rather than stew. So when the beef is almost cooked, let's go in with our vegetables. And you could choose your own adventure here. I'm going with some cabbage first up some Chinese cabbage or Napa cabbage. And I just want to stir fry that until the cabbage is just wilted. Whenever you've got quite a large amount that you're stir frying in your wok, try to add the ingredients and then give them some time to stir fry and, um, and heat through. And that way we're avoiding that stewing issue again. Trying to keep things as dry as possible when you're stir frying. Okay, so now in with my shredded carrot. And I often use shredded carrot in my weeknight dishes because you can buy it already shredded. Uh, so that just saves a little bit of time. No need to be a hero during the week. And some bean shoots as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my rice. And just like any good Asian child, I always have rice in my fridge. Rice made the day before is, is really good for fried rice. If you want to check out my video though on how to make rice, especially for fried rice, uh, find that on my YouTube channel. Okay, so rice goes in. And our red sauce. Look at that colour. Now in with our egg and some spring onion. And that is it my friends. Oh, look at that color. 
color. Now a little bit of special here at the end, some spring onion and some sesame seeds. And that is one very good looking fried rice. Let's see how we've gone here. Mm. You know, I always find any kind of fried rice so comforting. Just a really beautiful base of flavors there. That spicy gochujang flavor. The sesame, the eggy egg, the beefy beef. Mm. This, the couch, me sitting on the couch, eating a massive bowl full of this. That's what I need right now. Mm. So good. Sweet and spicy Korean flavored glaze and wings so crunchy. I mean, just listen to this. Listen to that crunch. Ah. And the flavor. Mm. These are my Korean fried chicken wings. Okay guys, I cannot even with these wings. They are so freaking good. Like they get so crispy, like glass shatteringly crispy. And then you put the glaze on, but they still stay really crispy. I mean, they're just, they're so good. And <laughs> they're actually really easy to make. A couple of little techniques though we gotta get right just to get that earth shattering crispiness. So let's get going on the wings first of all. Ah, oh, this one is so exciting. Ah, oh, can't wait. Um, all right, salt. We wanna salt our wings and you want like a generous amount of salt here. A lot of the salt kind of falls off. So I want like a really well seasoned wing here. And just a little bit of pepper. And then just give these a mix. Really get in there with your hands. Make sure that salt is giving some love to each little wing in there. All right, just let that seasoning work its magic just while we get everything else ready. And now for the glaze. So this is a soy-based glaze, so I want some soy sauce. And some sugar. Some apple cider vinegar. I kind of like the apple cider vinegar because it adds a little bit of fruitiness, a little bit more interest to the sauce, but just regular white vinegar would be fine as well. And now here comes the spicy. So I'm using some Korean gochujang chili paste. Looks like this guy in the red tub. I go through so much of this stuff. It has like a, well, it's a fermented chili paste. So you get the spicy, but then you get an, an additional like salty savoriness that really kind of boosts the flavor of anything you're adding it to. And now some hot mustard as well. And we're gonna add a really intense garlic kind of hit to this one as well. So I wanna grate in three cloves. And for those of you who know me well enough by now on my channel, there's always more spice you can add. So I'm gonna add a little bit more dried red chili. This one is like an optional, but it kind of infuses that sauce with a little bit more kick. Now you just need to cook this for a couple of minutes just until everything's dissolved. And that's it, we can leave that alone until we're ready to glaze our wings. All right, so let's get back to the crispy wing part. And what I wanna do here is get my wings into some corn flour. Now, corn flour is what we call corn starch outside of the US, so just to uh, clear up any confusion there. You could also use potato starch as well. The corn flour or potato starch gives a really light coating uh, and makes everything really crispy, much lighter than all purpose flour here. So definitely go with either of those options and make sure you're tapping off the excess. I don't want these wings to be super floury or to have too much of a coating on the outside. I just want a really thin, very crispy layer on the outside. All right, so let's work some magic here now. I'm just gonna test my oil, and what I want is some nice little active bubbles around that chopstick. Now, chicken pieces go in. So we're gonna fry this chicken twice, and the double fry is going to give us that extra, extra crispiness that we're after. 
And there's a couple of little things here. So one, I'm going to do something that I'm constantly telling you guys not to do. And that is I'm just going to overcrowd my pan here because uh, this chicken is going to cook for this first fry for 20 minutes. And I actually don't want the oil that hot. So putting all the chicken in at once and letting it go kind of keeps the temperature not too hot. So there is method to the madness, everyone. Now I just like to keep the chicken moving every so often and yeah, 20 minutes. Make yourself a cup of tea. Check your Instagram. Probably not enough time to watch something on Netflix, but you know, I'm sure you can find something to do. All right, these guys are looking good. They're a kind of like pale golden color. But the real thing that we've done here is kind of expelled all of that moisture that's in the chicken and prepping them for the, like the extra crispy second fry. So anyway, get these draining on a paper towel. And again, what I'm trying to do is remove as much moisture as possible, hence the paper towel. And while I'm waiting for that chicken to kind of drain and dry out a little, I'm gonna just clean up my oil here, scoop out any little bits and pieces. All right, now just wait for that oil to heat up again ever so slightly. And now chicken back into the oil for their extra crispy bath this time. This is where we're going for color as well. And now we need to exercise a little more patience. We're nearly there guys, 10 minutes until these guys are like so super deluxe crispy. All right, so this chicken is looking pretty delightful right now. Uh, let's get it out. And this time I'm gonna get them out onto a baking rack that's gonna make it easier for me to glaze these babies. Look at that golden color and then listen to this sound. That's just like the most incredible kind of music you could ever hear. Crispy wing music, my favorite. All right, let's do some glazing here, guys. Now this glaze is super intense, so I just need a nice light little layer of that sweet and spicy goodness. Now turn them over and get both sides. Geez, these wings have gotten some love today, haven't they? All right, the most loved wings in the world. And now a little smattering of sesame seeds. out onto a serving plate. And there you go guys, like the crispiest wings you've ever tried, honestly. And they'll sit around and maintain their crispiness. Like, it's just like a magical wing. It's a magic wing. Let me, let me see. I'll test it out and let you know. Mm. Listen to that crunch. Ah. And the flavor. Mm. Like just a hint of that beautiful spiciness, but then like sweet and tangy as well. Ah. Mm. I mean, can't even deal with these. They are just so good. Amazing. Three words guys, bacon, eggs, noodles. Wait, maybe one more word, spicy. Okay, that's all you need to know. These are my Korean style bacon and egg noodles. 
chicken and eggs, but also with noodles, epic and spicy sauce. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Let's get going on the spicy sauce. First of all, uh, I'm starting out with some Korean gochujang chili paste. I mean, this stuff is like a pantry staple for me. It is full of flavor, it's spicy, it's got all the feels. All right, so we want a good whack of that. And we also need some soy sauce, some dark soy sauce, and just a little dash of sugar. So all pantry ingredients, really simple. And we just give that a mix. And we are ready to get sizzling with our bacon. Now I just need a little bit of oil here to get my bacon started. And then my bacon, of course. And now you just wanna let that bacon do its thing in there uh, for a couple of minutes until we're starting to get some nice little brown bits and pieces. All right, now we wanna let that bacon do its thing in there for a good like, I don't know, four or five minutes. I wanna to start to see some nice little burnished brown edges. So while that's happening, I'm gonna whisk out eggs. Okay, so now the bacon is looking pretty damn magical. We've got some lovely little brownie bits happening here. I'm gonna go in with just some finely sliced like Napa cabbage that I've got, or Chinese cabbage, or Wombok, couple of different names, but you know what I mean. Some nice crunchy cabbage. All right, so just toss that around until that cabbage looks nice and tender. Okay. And now you can see that there's quite a nice little layer of bacon fat in there. I am not afraid of the bacon fat, I embrace the bacon fat. <laughs> but if you would like to take some of it out, you can, I won't judge. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is leave it in and I'm gonna add in my eggs. Okay, so at this point, I wanna get my noodles into some boiling water. And just when they're starting to break apart, I wanna get them straight into my pan. Now, pour in your sauce. Now, just toss everything together. Now we need a little bit of spring onion here just to green up things a bit. And that, my friends, is looking like one very glorious noodle dish. Let's get it out onto a plate. And there we go, bacon and eggs done my way, spicy with noodles, with all the good things. You know, this is just the kind of dish that really makes me so happy. Oh, so you get the bacon, obviously. Bacon makes everything better, but then you've got this creamy egg, you've got this spicy gochujang. Mm. So yum. So every little piece of chicken here is like a flavor explosion. And the real secret is that lemon sesame salt at the end. Okay, so super complex flavors, but super easy to make. Now that is my kind of chicken dinner. All right, so we're gonna start off with all the aromatics first. I'm gonna do my garlic, and I'm gonna grate that straight into my chicken. And now for some ginger. And then a whole bunch of spring onions. I really want this lovely onion flavor in the marinade. And now for all the ingredients that are gonna add all the umami and the flavor in there sort of the extra special sort of stuff for our chicken. So I'm using a Korean chili paste called gochujang and this one you can find in the Asian section of a lot of major supermarkets now or try your Asian grocer as well. So it's basically a fermented chili paste and it adds so much savory flavor to any dish and a beautiful red color too. And I want some honey for some sweetness and soy sauce and a little dash of sesame oil. Now we want everything in here mixed up really well. Now if you're super organized, yes, of course you can leave this to marinate for a couple of hours or overnight, but I'm telling you this marinade is so full of flavor that if you're unorganized like me, that's great. You can just use it straight away. Now empty out that chicken onto a tray lined with some foil and spread that chicken out. You want each little piece to have its own little bit of personal space. Now I'm using the oven grill or the oven broiler today because I want a really nice lovely char on this chicken. Take about 25 to 30 minutes. Mm, now that color is exactly what I'm looking for, that beautiful charry edge. Ah, oh, so much flavor. 
Okay, so the final little secret extra bit we're gonna do today is this lemon sesame salt. And I just want some lemon zest. And then because I like things a little extra spicy, I'm gonna add some chili flakes. That's totally optional. And then some black sesame seeds and a couple of good pinches of salt. Give that a mix. Mm, and I just love that color. That lemon is like a little ray of sunshine. Now to serve this up, we want some nice pieces of that juicy, spicy Korean chicken. And then a little sprinkling of that lemon sesame salt. Okay, proof is in the pudding, so let's have a look. Yum, you know what I'm getting? I'm getting that spicy gochujang flavor. I've got that beautiful lemon. Mm, so good and so easy.